as an overarching statement, you have a president who, uh, in more than one instance, has taken a step or two or three back from the role of global leader as an indispensable nation, leader of the indispensable nation. Uh, and I think you see in Governor Romney a willingness to be more assertive and leading not from behind, but in front. Governor Romney's view is both rhetorically, publicly, strategically, tactically, uh, we should be shoulder to shoulder uh, with Israel. There should be no daylight between us. We have a very different view of the degree of assertiveness that's required by the future leader of the indispensable nation as between Barack Obama and Mitt Romney. I favor Mitt Romney. But it starts with, are the people that you're going to entrust the safety and security of the United States of America, do they have a directionally and philosophical foundation that is in the right place and is it sturdy? Uh, knowing Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan quite well, I would suggest to you that foundationally and directionally they are sturdy and clear, Reagan-esque in that regard. In the intermediate and long term, there is no security without prosperity. You know, so you are, we are only secure to the extent our ability to research, develop, manufacture, uh, pay for, and deploy the tools of security requires us to be a prosperous nation. Mitt Romney has been very forceful about saying that's un not only unacceptable, and he wants to uh, extinguish the sequester, but he's also said that if he's fortunate to become President of the United States, the defense budget overall will not be cut, and it in fact will be nominally increased, and he's had specific targets within that relative to the size of the Air Force, size of the Navy, and the like, uh, that recommits America to a growing, but strategically growing, uh, military. And it stands in stark contrast uh, to President Obama's position and where he seems to be steering uh, budgetary proposals for the military. As our eyes turn, uh, understandably, to Iran and to Syria, I would pay some attention to the degree of real stability that they do or don't have in our career. This is about whether our nation is secure. So leaders need to step up and say, I'm willing to take the hit politically in order to do what's right for the security and safety of my country. For a future leader, uh, I think it's really important to not measure it just by popularity, but what does it really take for this nation to be secure and be willing to take the hits, even if it isn't? It's important for all of us to recognize there is evil in the world, and ignoring it doesn't make it go away. In fact, it encourages it. So in my view, when you see evil and hear evil, it needs to be called out, and it needs to be addressed. Governor Romney has said he would not allow Iran to have a nuclear weapon, and he would leave all options on the table and all that that implies. I believe it would be in our best interest to do everything that we can to make sure the Iranians believe we are not uh, bluffing, that the options, all of the options, are credible options and under serious consideration. And if they don't uh, begin to have real progress in the negotiations real soon, in my view, I think it's time to begin to send a different message to them. I think it's helpful with respect to Syria to do a little bit of retrospection about how we got here. I think it's fair to say that uh, there are critical uh, leaders around the world, including in the United States, who viewed Bashar al-Assad as a reformer. Uh, they had a very hopeful view of him based on his uh, portion of his background that's Western, his spouse's uh, education and background. And I think uh, time has now revealed the truth. And the truth is he's a killer of his own people. He's a terrorist. He's a thug. Uh, and he should go.